Laurie, your thoughts on these plans today? I think there's about a 400-page document, wasn't it? Are you happy by this? Uh, have they missed anything? Should we do more? The, the first thing to understand is that we're talking about this because of the major threat that we're faced with from climate change and other environmental problems. Um, we're also talking about it because there could be massive benefits from the green transition, um, including, at the moment, not being so reliant on gas, which is a major problem. Um, the question is how credible the plan is for delivering the targets that we have. And we've got a glut of plans today. There are so many of these documents that come out. We've been waiting for them for a very long time. In some ways, some of the things that are being suggested do pass that credibility test. In other ways, they do not. There is not, for example, enough support for households to help them get rid of their high carbon heating system, their boilers and things like this. And that kind of goes to the heart of the problem that we face here is that when it comes to the green transition, we have been told that this is more of an individual problem. And it isn't. In some ways it is. We've got to make sure that we change our behaviour. But it's more a problem of government having to act more, to intervene more into the economy to make these major changes. This is a global problem and only an institution of the size and power of government can really make the transitions that we need. In more the government intervention. Ella Whelan, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I'm not necessarily against more government intervention, but if it works, and the thing about, you know, sometimes you have to, as all people who are involved in the debate about the environment say, ask the experts. And so I did. I rang up my father, who has been uh, building and refitting homes for 30 years, and anyone who knows anything about boilers, or in particular these heat pumps, knows that they are only beneficial if you have a completely watertight insulated home, if you have excellent um, you know, insulation, if you have triple glazing. And as Insulate Britain protesters who've been dominating the news for the last few weeks have pointed out, you know, many, many of our homes in the UK are poorly insulated and any of these heat bumps aren't going to even come near to heating a house to a proper level, even in mild, you know, in mild weather, never mind the fact that we get very cold weather in, in England in the winter. Uh, and faced with the reality, there's meant not just that the 5K is kind of, uh, you know, peanuts when it comes to funding this, but it also we've tip the balance in favour of sacrificing our quality of the life for the environment. Now, everyone who's in any way, shape, sensible knows that we have to do certain things and take this you know, issue very seriously. But I think what we're asking people to do is not only be hit in the pocket, but also sacrifice the quality of their life, you know, a very basic human need to be able to be warm in your home um, in order to kind of make a show of doing something for the environment. I mean, the other question in terms of, you know, the reality of this, the practicalities of this, is if we're all going to be switching to, uh, electric, you know, more higher reliance on electricity and shunning gas, is the government planning to build new power stations? I mean, how we... There, there needs to be some level of kind of uh, a, a willingness to understand that we have to expend energy, that we have to do things to the planet in order to build a sustainable future. At the moment, it feels like it's all tightening belts and doing less, and that means that uh, less well-off people are going to be hit the worst. Yeah, and Vicky, there's talk. I mean, God only knows how much all this is going to cost, I think is the honest answer. I don't really think anyone does, but there's talk of a trillion pounds over 30 years. Um, obviously, they're going to lose, the government's going to lose tax revenues from fossil fuel-related things. Tax rises seem inevitable. Uh, how do you think we're going to pay for all this? It's not, of course, a problem that the UK is the only country that's facing. Um, it is a problem which everyone is, is dealing with. So there is a lot of money being spent across Europe. In the US, um, President Biden has huge plans to uh, electrify everything, basically, and put loads and loads of charging points all across the US huge amount being spent on infrastructure everywhere. So I'm afraid we're going to have to pay for it somehow. Now, the question is, and I think that's what you're asking, is how? Mm. Um, so tax increases, yes, possibly. Um, and borrowing, continuing to borrow so, and putting it on infrastructure spending. But I think industry is what the government is relying on, that the energy sector is going to do the right things, if you like, uh, that even the cost of boilers... Uh, or rather not boilers any longer, I apologise, heat pumps. Heat pumps, It's going yeah. to be going down very significantly because there are going to be advances on this. But I think Ella is right in what she said. The interesting thing about elsewhere where heat pumps have been used, they have worked because houses are built differently. They're well insulated. Our housing stock is very old by comparison to most European countries and therefore it's going to be very difficult to get to that point. What it means is that we have to be looking for other alternatives as well. Everyone's talking about possibly hydrogen being used a lot more extensively. But in the meantime, I think most people are going to say, I'm going to keep my gas boiler. Thank you very much.
Yeah. Laura, do you think people care enough about this? I think people are very concerned about the threat that climate change poses and we see that Do you? all yeah absolutely we see it in the polling time and time again we see it in the polling in the constituencies of the MPs that are questioning whether we should take action on climate change i think people are very concerned but at the same time they understandably say oh well the government's telling me to do this with my boiler and i can't afford it and i think that's absolutely fair enough and that's where we got to distinguish between the types of government intervention we're talking about right there's one type of government intervention where the government says you're going to have to change your gas boiler and i'm not going to give you enough money there's another type of government intervention where it makes massive investments in supporting people to change their boiler and, crucially, helping the, mar the market respond to the kind of demand that's needed to make all these changes. Charlie Mullins, the head of Pimlico Plumbers, said today that this strategy didn't seem very credible. He was partly saying that because there aren't enough people and companies to respond to the kind of demand we need, and the government can stimulate that. It would be the same as at the beginning of the pandemic last year. The government's saying the only way that you can act is as an individual, mm. full stop, instead of, and we will invest in vaccines to also help you as we try to go through this pandemic. We are getting a lot of the first bit, but not enough of the second bit, where the government's investing to change the economy. I also think it's, you know, you have to uh, take a broader look at this, which is that we're all about, as Laurie says, not just the individual, but all about very short-termist approach. And I think the focus is, has to be less on how can we manage with the kind of relatively crappy position we're in at the moment, which is that, you know, there's a problem with the planet, but also there's a continuing problem that many people, even with gas boilers, can't afford to heat their houses. You know, but people are living in cr crummy houses at the moment with energy flying out the window, and that's a problem. We should be looking at how do we create cheaper and better and more environmentally friendly energy sources for the future. So looking at things like hydrogen, looking at things like nuclear technology, you know, why has the government given up on these things where it went, you know, with the uncomfortable fact is a reliance on electricity, let's remember, is only just putting off the problem of sustainability because it's not something that's going to be a resource that's around forever. Just we have to look at, you know, broader ideas and taking a leap, you know, thinking about long-term solutions like nuclear or hydrogen. Well, the truth is, of course, there is an element of um, investing in hydrogen and I think that's going to be a very significant part of what happens in the future. And, of course, we know that nuclear is being considered. First of all, we already have a plant, which is a new plant coming up. In One. In point, yes. Size will see is being discussed and again and again and again that may happen plus loads of smaller sort of reactors that can be used uh, to pump up if you like a little bit the the amount that comes from nuclear so we could get that but of course the cost is very significant in terms of the upfront cost and also what you have to guarantee to uh, those who build those plants in terms of what they may be getting uh, at the other end once they start selling their energy and that's that's a big question mark as to whether that's going to be cheap enough, really, for an economy of the type that we'd like to see in the future, being able to afford it, in other words, uh, for the individual householder. Yeah, and Laurie, I mean, people are contacting me and they're saying, you know, how are they going to afford this? People are saying that they just, you know, one chap here has just got in contact, uh, Roger, says that he lives on £250 as pension. How is he going to afford um, to say? He's saying absolutely ridiculous. There's no way that he could afford this at all. Uh, lots of people getting in contact. They're saying that they think that we're doing enough already. Lots. Asking about what people like China are doing. Why is all this focus on us pushing further and further and further beyond what we originally committed to? Well, quickly on the China one, every country has to get to this net zero carbon figure. Uh, that includes China. Vast job to do. People should be talking about it. They are all the time. We also have to do our bit as well. Um, and that's just the way it works. We have to globally get down to, to net zero. Um, but the people who are, are, are phoning and calling and tweeting in about the cost on them, it, absolutely right. I'm not going to defend the government here. It is ridiculous that government is essentially setting us almost sometimes against the science by saying well you i'm going to put the burden of dealing with this on your shoulders when people can't pay it when actually government doesn't have to do that it could choose to give people more support it could choose to invest in all the things that would mean that the cost would come down and people would be able to afford these borders and it could also invest in better energy efficiency and other what are called demand side measures and this is the techie term for stopping wasting so much energy because we waste a huge amount of it and that would save people money as well as we make that transition but we've got to stop focusing on the individual the government is pushing that responsibility on the individual's shoulders it doesn't have to be that way it shouldn't be that way